Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Blending modes is a powerful and unique feature of Affinity Photo. It's a worthy tool to learn and add to your editing arsenal as it can be used to perform a multitude of enhancements from darkening, lightening, adding contrast, creating color effects, and many more. In this video, we're going to be focusing on one specific type of blending mode, the contrast blend mode, and five ways it can be used to improve your photos. So let's get right into it. First, let's start off with what is a blending mode. Blending modes are mathematical operations that blend layers based on their hue, saturation, and luminosity to produce a variety of effects. For blend modes to work, you need at least two layers. The layer below, which is called the base layer, and the layer on top, which is called the blend layer. The blending mode determines the blend operation applied to the blend layer. To change the blend mode, simply select the mode from the drop-down menu. Now that we know what a blend mode is, let's give an overview of the contrast blend mode specifically. The contrast blend mode is one category of blend mode. Other categories include normal, darkened, and lightened. The most commonly used contrast blend modes are overlay, soft light, hard light, and linear light. As you can see, Affinity has grouped them together in the drop-down list. But how does the contrast blend modes work? All contrast blend modes work similarly. The resulting output is based on the colors of the blend layer. As you can see here, if the blend layer color is exactly 50% gray, the output results in no change. No operation is performed on the base layer. Let's change the blend layer to a color darker than 50% gray. Notice now that there is an effect. The base layer colors have been darkened. Next, let's change the blend layer to a color lighter than 50% gray. Again, there is an effect, but this time, the base layer colors have been brightened. So as you can see, by controlling the colors of the blend layer, you can perform both darkening and brightening operations in one step. And that's why it's very useful for contrast enhancement. Now that we know how the contrast blend mode works, let's discuss five ways it can be used to improve an image. At number one is simple contrast enhancement. This is the simplest way to use the contrast blend mode. To enhance contrast, duplicate the layer. With the top layer selected, choose a blend mode. To my eyes, soft light gives the best results as it retains detail in both highlights and shadows. The rest give too harsh an effect. As you can see, it's an improved result with deeper blacks and more vivid color. So that is simple contrast enhancement. Let's move on to the next way of using the contrast blend mode. The next way to use contrast blend mode is contrast enhancement, but with refinements. Simple contrast enhancement works great, but in many cases, the contrast blend mode will result in images with overly dark shadows or overly blown highlights or both. So some refinements need to be done for a better result. Let's demonstrate this with this example. Once again, I'll duplicate the image. To avoid confusion, I'll rename the layers. With the top layer selected, I'll choose a blend mode. Once again, soft light seems to give the best results. I'll choose that. As you can see, while the contrast has been greatly enhanced, particularly in the midtones, it appears overly dark in the shadows and important details have been lost. No problem. Let's refine the edit by using a layer mask. 
With the blend layer selected, click the layer mask button. Next, with the layer mask selected, paint black in the overly dark regions. There, a more balanced result. Here is the before and the after. Aside from layer masks, another option to refine the blend result is to reduce the contrast of the blend layer via adjustments. Let's demonstrate. Once again, starting with the previous image, I'll reduce contrast by using the Curves tool. Click Adjustments. Click Curves. Drag the Curves Adjustment layer inside the Blend layer. Manipulate the curve to form a reverse S, which has the effect of reducing contrast. As you can see, it's a better result. Shadows are no longer too dark and important details can be seen. Here is the before and the after. So that is the second way of using the contrast blend mode, enhancing contrast with some refinements. Let's move on to the third way of using the contrast blend mode. The third way of using the contrast blend mode is to use it to fix bad overexposure. This technique is more applicable to overexposed JPEG images as with raw images, you're better off reducing exposure via the develop persona. To demonstrate this, let's work with this JPEG image, which is badly overexposed. Once again, I'll duplicate the image. As you can see, using a contrast blend mode with this configuration degrades instead of improves the result. As such, I'll use a different blend layer. Instead of using the same image for the blend layer, I'll use a filled layer instead. Click the new layer button, fill the layer with black. Set the blend mode to soft light. As you can see, it's a much better result. While the entire image has been darkened, the highlights have remained unchanged. You can reduce the contrast further using the opacity slider. Or strengthen it by adding another blend layer. So that is the third way of using a contrast blend mode. Let's move on to the fourth way. The fourth way of using a contrast blend mode is to improve selection accuracy. Let's demonstrate this concept with this image. I'll try to brighten the subject and make it really stand out. To do that, I need to make an accurate selection. Unfortunately, the edges of the subject are not as distinct from the background as we would like and may pose problems for the selection brush's edge detection. No problem, let's make the edges clearer by performing a contrast blend mode. Duplicate the layer, choose the hard light blend mode. There, the edge contrast between the subject and background has been greatly improved. Use the selection brush to make the selection. As you can see, it is now much easier to get an accurate selection. There, the selection is done. We can now get rid of the hard light blend mode as it has served its purpose. I'll replace hard light with soft light, which gives a more pleasing effect. Next, let's use the brightness and contrast adjustment to brighten our subject. There, much better. So that is the fourth way of using the contrast blend mode. Let's move on to the final method. The final way to use the contrast blend mode is for sharpening. You might not know that sharpening is actually a form of contrast enhancement. Let's use the same image to demonstrate this concept. I'll create another blend layer by duplicating the top image. To avoid confusion, I'll name this blend layer High Pass. Next, I'll add a High Pass filter to this layer. 
click on the Live Filters button, click High Pass. Notice that when the blend mode is set to normal, it becomes obvious what the high pass filter produces, a solid gray layer. As we have discussed, a 50% gray layer produces no effect on the base layer when a contrast blend mode is applied. So right now, the high pass layer will not do anything to the image. Let's change that by increasing the radius. Notice that increasing the radius subtly lightens and darkens the colors from the original gray. Let's change the blend mode from normal to linear light. Notice now there is an effect. Details have been sharpened. Yet another application of a contrast blend mode. So there you have it five ways to use the contrast blend mode to improve your images. Let me know any other way to use contrast blend modes that I may have missed out. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.